going on. Give everybody a second to join. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I am uh, on Instagram and on Facebook and YouTube, all going live. Welcome to episode 11, Shift Drink Live. It's been a while. It has been a couple of weeks, I think, to be honest. So, had to... Uh, go for a quick vacation. I would not say it was a quick vacation. If you guys got notified earlier um, that we went live, you guys met our new sound guy. That was Jaden Doyle. He was working on everything. Yeah, he was working on uh, getting it all set up for me while I was doing a project at the house. Have you ever signed on for a project that you think is only going to take you like 20 minutes? You're going to put some stuff up and, uh, you know, I'm going to put this garbage can in there and, uh, and it's going to be on the countertop 30 minutes max and two and a half hours later and a, a trip to Lowe's or whatever it might be. You still working on it? Anyway, we finally got it all taken care of. Um, finally got it all done. So welcome back to shift drink live we had a nice episode a couple of weeks ago and uh i didn't get to talk much so cheers it's the first beer of the day ah it's tasty 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 so i was um i've been we've been doing a lot of work everybody's like coming and like working on trying to stay open trying to make sure that they're staying safe and trying to just you know take care of their employees and pay their bills it's been an interesting time to say the least i have friends that um you know are in last ditch efforts to try to save their business and i'm not just talking about restaurants you know like they're really buckling down and trying to pivot that's the new word right everybody quick task honeydews everybody um is trying to pivot that's the new word pivot 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 or you know redefine uh over the next little while next couple of weeks i've got a list of people that i want to pull uh, in and we'll do some leave it on the lines and we'll let them explain how they're pivoting and 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 trying just to stay open you know if, as as we go deeper into the um situation i got friends that i reach out to and some of them are you know sick right now trying to get through it some of them, when they got COVID, were really, really sick. And, you know, it was tough on them. And then some of them are like, well, I'm just tired and I don't want to eat anything. So, you know, I guess every, I just wish everybody just stays healthy and gets to keep their stuff open um, and survives whatever is going to happen. As restaurant people, we're used to getting kicked in the teeth. It just seems like every time we turn around, we're taking another one to the face. Uh, my family in Louisiana, I guess Louisiana popped back up, second huge spike. It's a big deal. A um, lot going on. But, hey, um, all you can do is control what you can control. And um, I thought it would be a good time to come back. Now, you know, it was interesting is while I was gone, um, I took a quick vacation with uh, my youngest son, and we went hiking for five days through the Sequoia Mountains, and it was amazing. We did 50 miles, and I completely underestimated the trip, completely underestimated the trip, and um man it kicked my ass it really did but it was a great it was we're out in the middle of nowhere and we had a good time it was some good father son time but i tell you what it it was a great thing to kind of just be in nature and away from all of the social media and the news and all that stuff sometimes that can become 
extremely overwhelming. I don't know how you guys feel about it, but if you tune in to try to figure out what's going on next or what you're faced against or who's saying what, it just kind of just can ruin your day or make you angry or mad. Depends. It doesn't even matter what side you're on. You're always struggling with it, right? But I want to take the time. I had some comments on the last couple of videos I didn't get a chance to answer. So if you guys have any um, questions or comments either on Facebook or YouTube, go ahead and throw them at me. And um, I'll, I'll try to answer them. But there's some pretty good pretty good questions and we had briefly talked about one of them the first question comes from jeremy mcfarland he's a new subscriber to the channel um and he's a chef of, of all places at bourbon's bistro in louisville kentucky and he says topic discussion idea my cooks on unemployment are making three or four times what they are make working i've had two quit already no one is willing to come back to work has this happened to you guys? Now, we've talked about it a little bit before, but it seems to be a honest, not an honest, it seems to be the uh, a theme coming throughout. Like, I've seen it on other uh, pages of businesses that I'm on on Facebook and stuff like that, where like, well, they don't want to come back. A, they want to stay safe, and B, um, they're making more money staying home. So why come in and bust your butt and, and risk the opportunity? or risk a chance of getting sick because God knows you don't know where all your customers have been. And um, what's crazy is that some restaurants are like, screw it, we're just going to shut down because, you know, people are saying we're invading their rights by making them wear masks when they want to come into the restaurant. It makes it hard on your servers, makes it hard on the cooks. It's just kind of like, oh, man. We had, uh, I know we talked about this a couple of weeks ago. One guy just closed his restaurants for a couple of days, let it blow over because people were getting their rights, uh, you know, stomped on by making them wear masks to come in to get his food. I don't know. I mean, we, uh, there, there's, it's so political and decisive. And here we are just trying to sell food and make people happy and make a living. So we're kind of caught in the mi middle of it. I think that, you know, you, some of the ride or dies will come in no matter what. And some of them will take the paycheck. But hell, you're making, what, he says three or four more times? That's a tough one. I mean, what do you guys think? What would you do? Do you stay home if you're making three or four more times? What's your thought on that? I would love to hear some of uh, other opinions besides mine because I'm kind of stuck I get it from the cook standpoint because I remember like why would I go in if I can make m more money doing this I get it and then I can feel the pain of the chef just trying to run or the chef owner or the owner operator just trying to run their business that can be very um, concerning now when we talked to Salima last week was that a week ago um, she was saying her staff has been there um, through thick and thin and some of their ideas have really helped them out i mean that was a great leave it on the line if you guys want to go and check that out she talks in depth about being on um triple d with uh, guy fieri and how he played a big part in that and he also talked about um she also talks about being an owner operator not a chef and having to work with chefs so it's been um it was a very good insight i enjoyed that conversation a lot so you guys can check that out on a previous leave it on the line Chef Will Gunther on Instagram says, but here in Ohio, you wear it and then take off. Servers touch their face. It seems less sanitary. Ah, yeah, it's the, uh, it's the disposable glove conversation that I like to have with people. Uh, you know, disposable gloves in the title is disposable. And I feel like cooks sometimes wear disposable gloves way past their life. You're supposed to take them off, wash your hands, throw them away, and put on a clean pair after each task. I feel like the mask situation, even with people, right? They don't even know, they don't even know what to do when they're wearing the mask because they're touching their face, they're touching the mask, they take it off, they leave it in the parking lot at the grocery store because it falls off, they don't want to get it. I mean, it is... It's tough. 
we got as a consumer i get upset when people give the restaurant an attitude when they have a modified menu hey guess what modified menus right you don't want to buy a lot of product hell it's hard to get enough product to run the menu in the first place i have some guys that are i'm really close to that are um chefs for u.s foods and well there's a few of them that have it uh, have still have a job but like u.s foods is not doing the sales that it used to neither is cisco neither is anybody so they're they're shrinking their warehouses and because they don't have the money to put it on the shelves and then you know you you're trying to streamline whatever you can make to survive and then people are like oh you don't have the you know sweet potato gnocchi anymore what's going on i don't know what the you know everybody wants their cake to eat it too but like we're just trying to make cake and still stay alive right it's tough you got cooks and people staying home and they're making more money you got trying to run modified menus and people are upset that you do it and you have people that don't know how to wear the gloves is um <laughs> And you don't know what to, and I, I'm looking at all your comments. Anyone suffering with the brisket and chicken prices? Insane. Yeah, prices of all the proteins are going up. So you're having to raise your prices there. I mean, Chef Will's really um, dropping some major comments on Instagram. He's saying things like he watches people wash their gloves when they should throw them away, you know, and you got to stop them. I mean, you got horrible prices on your proteins you're having a hard time getting the product in the building and then um people want to get upset with you if you're like listen if you're going to come in and sit down in our restaurant um you, you're gonna have to wear a mask until you start eating um and they're like this is ridiculous katrina pruitt uh, katina pruitt customers get so angry since our menu is now limited I mean, that's two different chefs in our industry saying the same exact thing. I mean, golly, you know, that's, it's interesting. It's like people finally go outside and they, they get involved and they're going to the restaurants and then they're upset with the restaurant that they are trying to support because they don't have everything. Well, you know, I think... I think they, they, that's t tough luck, right? You just want to like kind of scream when you're doing everything possible. It makes it really, really tough. Anyway, so that's kind of like where we are and what we're dealing with. The I had it. I had somebody throw a question to everybody or throw to our community on YouTube. And I want to share it with you guys, and I'd love to hear what you think about it. Uh, when does the culinary community come together and say, Govern mayor, Governor or Mayor, we need to get back to work. We need to cook food for folks. We need to take care of our children. This has become much more about politicians. I agree that we need to be safe. We wear a mask on the line, but if a statement needs to be made, it's food and beverage makes this country without chefs, cooks, dishwashers, bartenders, waiter, waitresses, busboys, housemen. Everyone would be lost. We are essential. Some people, uh, you know, I do think that um, the business is essential and it helps people find a little bit of reality or break from reality and they get the opportunity to go out and have a, a meal. But what I feel like's happening is when they go out to have a meal, we're getting kicked in the teeth. Um, another comment people are getting upset with the limited menu i mean that's that's three four here's the deal we can band together as a community right i really hope we do i hope it changes the industry uh, well i mean it is changing the industry but i hope it changes the industry for a little bit better where we kind of support each other more we've always been that industry that uh eats its young a little bit like oh toughen up you know the old school guys like i'm an old guy now like in the kitchen i'm an old I'm one of the older people so you know it's interesting i came up a certain way and the people above me had to come up a different way and now um with saying that you know there's some things that our industry needed to change and you know it was tough back in the day it was crazy and and now we're facing a completely different reality and you can't get people to come work for you because now they're making more money so yeah there's a lot of stuff that we're getting thrown at us that we need to clean up I do know that not too long ago, um, 
I was trying to get a hat to a, a chef and he had the wrong address so I called him to try to get the right address and uh, he he was a chef at a hospital in North Carolina or South Carolina and he had been extremely busy they all went home for a little bit and then had to figure out what to do and then some of the chefs didn't come back and so he's running the kitchen with maybe two or three people and he's doing insane amount of meals that he's never had to do that before like with such little labor <sighs> i mean I was talking to him. He's like, yeah, I've been busy. He goes, I'm on my ninth or 10th day. I'm going to take tomorrow off. And then I got to go back in to get everything kind of situated. And he goes, I'm having a problem getting my deliveries on time. You know, it's a buddy of mine that runs a meal prep company. Uh, one of the nursing homes. I see that uh, Steven Stricker, he runs a nursing home on Facebook. He's asking questions. Uh, they want to change the menu every week. But man, he's having to just based on uh, substitutes substitutes are better than nothing i guess um the point was though the nursing home needed the meal prep company to try to get them some meals and because they couldn't they couldn't they didn't have a staff to do it so he was trying to figure out how he could get it but the prices for protein was so high that he was concerned that his prices would get him out of it so We'll see. I mean, he, he was putting the bid in. As always, there's a lot going on at my house. That's the garage because my, you know, kids are running around all the time and doing things. So, you know, that's part of filming live. Things like that happen. So here we go. David Utley. Oh, yeah. Okay. So he went from 1.4 million food in June 2019 to 47,000. 47,000 from 1.4 million. That is that is so hard. Well, we went from a couple months to, to goose egg. You know, we don't have any money coming in right now. Like, the arenas and stuff are just taking it to the face. Like, my business is really just getting hosed. It's going to be... I don't know when, you know, you got, you got baseball playing and they've got cutouts of people. Uh, I've actually watched a couple of sporting events on TV and I thought, I thought it was interesting to watch the baseball kind of plays the, the sound in the back. That's in, you know, where it doesn't really, when you're watching it, it doesn't seem like it's not a, a game to be watched. And then basketball did a really good job with the CGI and the screens, but there's still nobody in the building. And, um, you know, it's a little bit quieter on the court. It doesn't have that rumble that it used to. Um, I'm concerned because there is no, there's no start date. There's no start date for what, when we might open. Because we have to figure it out, right? So the bigger places that uh, typically always, you know, major sporting events and concerts, I don't know when that's going to happen again. So that's that can be you try not to think about it too much. And I think it might be a good this might be what I really wanted to talk about with you all. Um, yeah, it's definitely not the same energy, Chef Tom. This is what I wanted to say. Um, it's an interesting subject oh you're you're closing the garage now thank you it's always something when we go live you got to watch Jaden do a sound check earlier and then now the garage doors open and closing so I'm enjoying a light shift drink today and um, I've been doing a lot of self reflecting and thinking right because when you're home when I'm home, I like to cook. I like to make a nice glass of wine or get a beer or, you know, I've been drinking Michiladas a lot lately. Um, I make this little spice blend for the rim. I like that. And, and then I start cooking. But at the same time, you know, every night you're home because I don't have any events. I don't need to be drinking every night. That gets a little aggressive on health. 
so this is my birthday month and I've decided that um, it's time to try to get into shape even more so in the last couple of months so we have this group on it on our page called the R&D group and it's like a group where we try to push each other to be better than we were yesterday it's the whole purpose of the group if you want to be a part of it you can go on our Facebook page and you can ask to be a member we keep it private because um, well, because we're the people that we want in there, we want them to actually be in there and just not join and not do anything. So this month, I have signed up for a, a 30K. We're going to do that on August 22nd, the day before I turn, uh, you know, 46 years old. It'll be interesting. I've never run that far. I'm trying to find ways to stay mentally and physically busy without going absolutely crazy and i think that's what we all used to struggle with and chef paul wrote an article about keeping the cook busy and it's tough right because if you're used to working 70 80 100 hours whatever your time frame is and then you go to working 40 or 20 or a regular 40 to 50 hour week and you're not up until one or two because there's no events it's a big transition and i know i'm four or five months into this trend it's been since march right um I'm deep into the transition, but 18, 20 years of this, and then it's kind of just going away on us. Um, I recently saw a chef, and he was like, oh, yeah, well, this, thanks for helping me out. I'm like, dude, if you need any help on the line, you need you need anything, you want me to come in, just call me, text me. I'll, I'll be there. So my goal, besides maybe getting back in the kitchen with for some friends, is to really focus on my health. And I think that's something I've talked about a couple of times on here. And I want to know if you guys are doing that. So you can DM me or, you know, send me a message or a question. But um, it's something that we've never done before really well as a crew. Like it's not something that you, you don't meet a lot of chefs and they go, oh, yeah, I'm really taking care of myself. You don't meet a lot of people in the service industry that put themselves first. We typically put everybody else first. And you know i once heard somebody say you know you're in an airplane and the masks fall down if you're in high altitude they don't ask you to put the oxygen on somebody else then on yourself you put it on yourself first because if you can't take care of yourself you can't take care of anybody else so my goal over the next three to four weeks is to take that into some very um strong consideration and i'm going to push myself to get to that next level and it's going to suck it's going to be hard it's, i'm gonna have to do things i, I don't like doing um so i'm really going to try that so if you guys want to follow that journey and see how that goes you can jump on our r d group on our facebook page um from extreme culinary outfitters and and be a part of it we'll see how it goes i mean that's all we can do that's all we can do Here's another question. The place I work, the people care, call in for pickup. Most people just don't care in my state. How about when you call for an order for pickup and they take about, I don't know, an extra 45 minutes before they even come and pick it up? And then it's not as at the place that it should be because it took them so long to come grab it, and then they're upset with the quality of the food. Sometimes we can't win at all. I don't know. These are my thoughts and where I was going with it. Hey, Jay Chef, hey, we're gonna have to get you on a show soon, right? That was a great interview. Um, it's been an interesting couple of weeks. I'm gonna tell you right now, if you can take a week off from social media, like I had zero cell service when we were gone, zero. And all, I, all we did was walk to the next beautiful location. It was absolutely stunning scenery and it allowed me to fully decompress and i did i underestimated the trip a lot but what i didn't understand is how soon my cell service was going to just disappear so i didn't i hadn't i didn't talk to um you don't i didn't know that i wasn't going to talk to gina for like an entire week it was an extremely um it was extremely great, like long week, but like my cell service stopped and I thought I had one more call. Okay, we're here. We're going to go gone. And then it was like, you can't check on anything. So major world events could have happened and we would have had no idea. 
We're out in the middle of nowhere. I think, and you know what's funny is I'm telling you guys to take a week off on social media and yet I'm like, follow me on YouTube, Instagram, or Facebook. No, but seriously, it was so refreshing to just be disconnected. And it really allowed me to get some different perspective. And maybe that's why I'm sharing the message that I really want to try to get to that next level of health, get to that next level of being uh, at peace and just being. Um, and that's really tough for us in the, in the industry. We're always leaning on our adrenaline to get through the week, or we always have these great I, these ideas that we want to push something, especially me, right? I'm always trying to do that next thing. And now I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do some stuff around the house. I'm going to get some stuff done. We're going to be posting our stuff on Instagram. But you know what? That week could change your perspective. Um, I recently was listening to something where uh, a stand-up comedian I follow, he, he cut out social media and news for an entire month. And then when he came back, he was super pissed off because nothing had changed. It was the same news from 30 days previously. And I tell you... Um, Isn't that an interesting message that he took 30 days off and nothing had changed? 30 days, one full month, and it was the same message. Maybe we need to remember that when we're looking at all this media and stuff, because I feel like we're under so much pressure as an industry that it's all just compiling on us and then when you look out and you jump on instagram or you jump on any of the stuff or i stay completely off twitter but you know i just i can't do it i don't understand it and it's there's always so much happening so fast but it just inundates you with like stress but yet our job is stressed and maybe there's there's other things that we can find so what i've tried to do is start doing more stuff outdoors less stuff on the phone but hey And I'll take that time to say, um, you can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter and just keep up with us. No, it's a side joke. But over the next couple of weeks, I really, I mean, if you guys are interested in trying to find out what you can do to um, feel more relaxed or more at ease, maybe it's, uh, maybe it's time. Look out for that R&D Brigade on our Facebook page. Um, I post little things on there that I'm thinking about, and I really just try to go, oh, I was reading this or I was listening to this video. What do you guys think? I think that kind of stuff at this time is the most important thing that we could probably do is take care of ourselves, um, each other. And I mean in the industry. (sighs) Because, you know, one thing we've never really done is looked out for each other inside our business. So that's the message. That's this shift drink. You know, stay off the news if you can and don't let it or don't let it affect you and realize that there's still people out there that are good and they want the best for everybody and check on each other. Those cooks that you used to work with and you haven't heard from in a while, maybe reach out. Try to text somebody and say, "Hey, how you doing? You doing all right?" Because uh It'll make you feel better when you take care of others and you take care of yourself. It's just a good thing. I don't know. I mean, you guys, you know, I just saw a message from Chef Pollard. Um, he and I, he's been following us for a while, and he was he was one of the guys and chefs that he shared stuff with me when um, our daughter was sick about his son being sick, and it was really nice. Um, he's like, hey, you know, if you end up doing – uh, chemo be sure you bring you know lemon drops because it'll help with the bitterness I think is what it was and that meant a lot because I knew that people out there cared about what we were doing and and that that makes a lot of difference because when you feel like you're alone and you're up against everything it really weighs on you and Here's the deal. A lot of us are chefs and leaders in the industry and owners and bartenders that people and restaurant managers, and they all look up to us as like some sort of like, oh, what are you going to do? You know, and when you're carrying that weight and you're looking for the direction and you feel responsible for your team and the people around you, you can get lost in that. You can completely get lost. And that's the tough part. And I think that's why it was another just amazing thing because I've never spent that much time just alone with um, 
with the family completely secluded. Well, we've had big vacations, but Logan and I, it was just us, you know, like in some other people, but it just was a decompress. Like all the pressure was gone. All we had to do was worry about each single day. And I was talking to a buddy of mine and I might, I'm going to wrap it up on this. I was talking to a friend of mine that was getting through COVID and this is what he said. He goes, I'm just trying to make everything as simple as possible. Everything as simple as possible. Now you often, and it's such a ginormous statement because all he's trying to do is bring all of it back to this zone. All the crazy, worrying about all this stuff, just make it simple. If you can make it simple, you can manage it. And that's the first step, is bringing things back to the zone. You often read about, you often read about, um, or I do, like I read a lot of books written by Jocko Willenick, and he talks about battle scenes and stuff. And when it starts to get really frayed and crazy, first thing he tries to do is bring it back to the training and to your zone and make it simple. Just make it simple and put one foot in front of the other. Yeah, audiobooks. Jeremy McFarland just, oh, hey, chef, we were talking about you um, just a few moments ago. So um, I was using your comment, so I appreciate that. Switch over to some audiobooks. You know, one book I could highly recommend as an audiobook is uh, You Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins. Anyway, guys, I could go on and on. It was fun catching up. We'll see you guys next week. Uh, Hopefully in the next couple of weeks, we'll get some of these guests lined out and we'll start doing some great Leave It On The Lines. If you guys have anything that you want to add, please DM me, shoot me some questions for some topics. And until next time, cheers.